My name is Tola, I'm 34, and I'm currently living an unsuccessful life. I come from a family of high achievers, so I'm Nigerian, and um, in my family, if you're doing whatever you're doing, you have to do it really, really well. Um, my mum speaks her native language, she speaks my dad's native language, she speaks French, Latin, and um, another native language, Nigeria. My dad speaks his native language, my mum's native language, Arabic, and he's learning um, Russian. My brother speaks English, um, he's learned Arabic at university, and he's learning Catalan. And my sister speaks Latin, French, and German. And I speak English, full stop. <laughs> in my family, excellence is a common denominator in which I am the outlier. And sometimes I really feel it. So I mentioned earlier that I'm 34, and so it might not sound that uncommon to you that most of my friends are in a situation where they're getting married or living with their partners and have babies or children. Our conversations now consist of who's the best babysitter, what the best school to send your children to, and what are the best mortgage rates. I barely ever contribute. I'm divorced and I'm childless. So sometimes I feel as though I'm not quite living up to the same measures of success that they have achieved in their lives. Of course, there are times when I'm reminded of how amazing I am when something goes right for me at work. But then something happens, like I'll go somewhere and someone will say something to me and it will put me back right at the beginning where I started. So my recent example was I went to a party and it was in summer, so it was quite warm and I took the bus there because it was near my house and I thought, I'm going to save money this way. And some of my classmates were there. And it was really fun at the beginning. I was getting to know what they've been doing in the 10 years since we saw each other. And um, again, all there with their husbands and their children. And um, I definitely felt as though I was somehow left behind. But it was fine because I was getting to know them and I was getting to realise again why we were friends in the first place or why we had been friends in the first place. At the end of the party, I was in the bus stop going home, waiting for my bus, and someone from across the road was driving past, and they waved at me. And because I'm a Londoner, I don't wave at random people, so I just thought, let me just check who this is. I stood up, and I realised it was my friend, her perfect husband, her perfect child, in their perfect Range Rover. And at that point, I just thought, how differently have our lives gone? We went to the same school, had the same education, and yet I'm here getting the bus and she is in her Range Rover. I really felt like somewhere, something had gone very badly wrong. Achievements, this is how we measure success. This is how we define success. The dictionary definition of success is a degree or measure of succeeding or a desirable or favorable outcome. These measures are often set out for us by our parents, by expectation, our peers, by comparison, and society, by judgment. For example, we might have measures that say things like, you should be married by the time you're 30, or by 35 you should have had your first or second child, you should have bought a house, maybe by 40 you should have doubled your income, um, you should be buying a second house, maybe even buying a holiday house. There are always age limits for us, which then suggests that there's a sell-by date, which we never even asked for. Another thing I've realised is that we've used social media as its own success indicator, with tweets, likes and follows. I'm currently writing a book, it's due out next year, and I was told by someone that the, most, the best way to get a good um, audits my book was to make sure my social media was up to scratch. I didn't know what that meant and so I checked with my editor and she said just check how many followers you have on your social media. So I did and I have about 500 on my Instagram and about 500 on my Twitter. I quickly realised that wasn't anywhere near enough when I compared it with some of the ones from my teenagers that I've met over the years recently um, and also some of my friends who have been doing things 
maybe in tech or maybe in their own startups, and they've been actively pursuing getting a big order, audience. I hadn't, and I realised that I had failed in the sense that the level of pre-success success that I should have had as an author was just not there. The message being that, unless I already had thousands of followers who had already affirmed me, why would anyone care about what I had to say? Lastly, we measure success by appearance. There's a certain expectation, for example, that someone doing a talk on, say, success would be dressed a certain way. I deliberately haven't dressed that way. In fact, this outfit is what I wore to that party where I was reminded of how inadequate I was. So my gold converse, my very short shorts, and my t-shirt, look like a teenager, look like someone half my age. This failure was exposed by other people that expect other people's achievements at my classmates' party. <coughs> I've realised that, in reality, only wealthy men can come up on stage wearing trainers, wearing jeans and a T-shirt and be taken seriously. As a woman, if I came up here wearing this, people wouldn't maybe think that I was going to give the same kind of message that a man might give. So for a man, you might think, he's a tech starter, or he's maybe an athlete, or he's in the music industry. For a woman, you might think, oh, she's a comedian. <laughs> we subconsciously demand these indicators of success, and they can haunt us. I recently um, heard the expression imposter syndrome. It's been going around my circles quite a bit, actually. And it's described as a, psycho a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts his or her life accomplishments and has a persistent internalised fear of being exposed as a fraud. People with imposter syndrome doubt their competence and it can also become a burden. It just shows how success doesn't always play out in the way we might think. The pressure to outperform, overachieve and constantly deliver can be quite detrimental. The Mental Health Foundation released a study in 2018 which said that younger people have higher stress relating to pressure. The Mental Health Foundation released a study in 2018 to say that younger people have higher stress relating to the pressure to succeed. They identified these groups as being 60% of 18 to 24 year olds, 41% for 25 to 34 year olds, compared to just 17% of 45 to 54 year olds and 6% of 55 and over. When people are constantly encouraged to share and talk about their, over their achievements, this highlights feelings of failure when you find one day that you have nothing to say. So what about those who don't measure up? You heard at the beginning about my many failures to get my dream job and to do particularly well in a career that I aspired to. So I would just like us to stop and think now about a situation where you never get married, you never have children, you never buy your own house, you never earn, say, 80,000 a year. You never get a master's degree. You never drive a car. What would your life look like and how would you feel about your life? Would you be anxious? Would you be embarrassed or ashamed? What would people think about you? What would you say on your social media accounts? Our mental health is under pressure when we are under pressure to succeed. There's a danger of buying into this universal idea of success. And this universal idea is that we presume that they are accessible to us and they are desired by us. Something that we never really think about. So what are your goals? 
When I was three, maybe, maybe four, someone told my mother that I was a slow child, that I would never read or write, or if I did, it would take a long time. My mum's Nigerian, so she said, that's not a thing, <laughs> and taught me herself. And it then became my desire, as I grew to love words and love reading and writing, that I'd be a writer, and I am a writer. When I was about seven, I think, maybe, I was at Kew Gardens, and I really felt as though posing in front of the vases of flowers made me a model. And I thought, one day I'm going to be a model. And I have, over the years. I've done Paris Fashion Week, I've done London Fashion Week, and I've loved it. But if I ask you, do you think I'm successful? What would you say? And without wanting to put words into your mouth, I might say, so I might assume that you would say something like, well, I've never read any of your work, and I've never seen your face on any billboards. So, no. So what should have been my success would quickly become my failure. And this is what happens when we try to reflect back someone else's expectations and call that success. The myth of success is that it is a universal measure, the same for all of us. But true success is determining what works for you, what you want to do in your life, and just going for it. My name is Tola Fisher, I'm 34, and I'm living a successful life. Thank you.